Dear students, today I will talk about the anatomical structure of the liver and the spleen. Let's start with the liver. Whenever you become familiar with a new organ, the very first thing, the very first question you put yourself is, why we have this organ? What is the function of this organ in our body? Why is it good for us we have this organ? Uh, this is especially important the liver because we have several misunderstandings on the functions of the liver. Uh, the liver is practically a chemical factory, a very complex one. Whenever we uh, ask on the exam as students, what is the function of the liver, usually get the answer, oh, this is a detoxicating organ, making the impression that the liver doesn't do anything else, just waiting for eating a poison and try to el eliminate it. The function of the liver is much, much more complex. Uh, let's see what, uh, what does it have. The very first thing, and whatever they do, it's most of this job is to finish the digestion. Uh, in the guts, uh, the enzymes uh, uh, will uh, disintegrate the food, not into elementary units, sugars or amino acids, but a little group of sugars, oligosaccharides, or little group of amino acids, oligopeptides. And this is the job of the liver to uh, put into the elementary units. Otherwise, the cells cannot use it. The, uh, this is uh, the portal circulation of what uh, we will talk about later on, we will ensure this process. The second most important function is a food reserve. You know, among the three uh, basic nutritions, the carbohydrates, the lipids, and the proteins, the carbohydrates are stored in the uh, liver. This is the liver's job to uh, feel in the, in the blood, Whenever we have a lot of sugar, it will store into the glycogen, and whenever we need more sugar, it will release into the blood. Uh, detoxication also happens, but not mostly not the external poisons, but um, um, several metabolic byproducts is present in the blood, which is uh, harmful or at least neutral, but should be eliminated. And this is the uh, primary function of the detoxication function of the, of the liver. Also, it is important in turning off the hormonal control by eliminating the long present hormones. And of course, partially it does whatever the food industry and other thing, other thing else poisons us, the detoxication. It also produces most of the blood proteins beside the uh, uh, gamma globulins, all, all of the major blood proteins produced by the blood, including the blood coagulants. It produces the bile. The bile, uh, the function of the bile is to eliminate the lipid soluble uh, waste material and also as a very useful component, a detergent which is necessary for the efficient lipid digestion. It produces hormones. The hormones, the most, uh, probably the most important is the IGF uh, group, the growth factor group, which is uh, the secondary uh, uh, hormone from the uh, growth hormone uh, system, and angiotensin gene, which is the uh, uh, material, intermediate material of the most powerful blood pressure controlling system. In the fetal age, it also forms blood. And these are the most important functions of the liver. Now, let's see what the liver looks like. It's relatively simple in structure. It has two surfaces, a diaphragmatic surface and a, uh, whatever is facing up, and a visceral surface, which is a little bit more complex, and which is facing the internal organs. The structure also relatively simple. If you see the diaphragmatic surface, you get very clearly divided into the bigger right and the smaller left lobe, divided by the falciform ligament. The, in the visceral surface, slightly more complicated. The uh, left lobe is a single entity, but the right lobe is separated partially by two organs up the uh, inferior vena cava. And this lobe, which is a little tail, the caudate lobe, is separated partially from that. And a quadrangular shape sublobe, the quadrate lobe, is separated by the, uh, 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 the vesicophalia, the gallbladder. Uh, in the visceral surface, we have a 
characteristic H-shape groove system and the component of them is between the caudate lobe and the left lobe we have the fissure for the ligamentum venosum, this is an embry um, uh, embryological remnant. More importantly from this fissure goes a ligament of which I will talk about in details later on, the uh, hepatogastric ligament. Uh, here in the line of the uh, inferior vena cava, which is partially embedded in the liver, we have the groove for the inferior vena cava. Uh, the gallbladder has the fossa vesicifalae, the valley from the vesicophalia, and finally, uh, uh, in the four uh, legs of the H, we have the uh, fistula ligamenti teratis for the round ligament of the liver. Finally, we have a horizontal fissure in which we have this is the porta hepatis. This is practically the hilum of the liver through which the uh, structures going in and coming out uh, of the liver. The liver is also divided into segments. The significance of the segment is that these segments are fully separated from each other. No vessels and no bias flow from one to other. This is how the, during surgery a unit, a piece of the liver can be uh, uh, removed, semi-separated. Uh, the books describe various classification of these segments, but nowadays it has uh, not really much significance except for the principle because there's a very big variations and whenever we want to make a surgery on the liver we make a medical imaging to see where is the internal circulation is and in this particular patient we will find, uh, find the various segments. Now we already have a kind of introduction to the uh, liver. Let's see uh, the, uh, where is in our location, in our body. The skeletal topography, this word describes that relative to the skeleton where the organ is. Uh, the fifth rib is a key structure on the top of the uh, liver. And this is located in the abdominal cavity, but pushed up to the rib cage, so all the way up to the fifth uh, uh, rib. The, uh, the left side a little bit lower because the heart is sitting on the top and pushes a little bit more down. Uh, down below, it must not go below the costal arch in normal liver. If it go beyond that, we have pathological condition. Uh, in the abdominal region, you already know which abdominal, what are the abdominal region. Most of them, the right lobe located in the right hypochondrium, it passes partially to the epigastrium and the left lobe uh, for a little area it takes in the left hypochondrium. With serotopography, you know the term means that uh, which part of this particular organ is in contact with which part of another organ. Uh, in the diaphragmatic surface is relatively simple. This is in contact with the diaphragm to, uh, is, uh, all along and partially the abdo anterior abdominal wall. The visceral surface is a little bit more complicated. It's in contact with many organs and these organs have some impressions in, in the uh, 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 liver. Here you can see the biggest organ, you can see the ghost of the uh, uh, stomach here, uh, has uh, many impressions. The esophagus, which is between the caudate lobe and the left lobe, this is around here, has the esophageal impression. The most, the body of the stomach has uh, this big impression, the gastric impression. The pylorus, which is a, a solid uh, ball-shaped uh, structure, has a deeper impression uh, somewhere here between the caudate lobe and the left lobe. And the duodenum also has a sign of the impression there. The other big organ, which is behind the liver and make impression, is the kidney. You can see this big area is the renal impression. Uh, the kidney um, uh, pushes that. And in the top, sometimes visible, the impression for the suprarenal gland. This is the impressio suprarenalis or suprarenal impression. Here, uh, the uh, liver is in contact with the colon. This is uh, what we name the colon impression. And finally, the gallbladder makes a kind of groove for that. And this is the fossa vesicifalae, the groove for the gallbladder. Uh, what is the peritoneal relation? This is one of the key, uh, important issue in the, uh, whenever we want to talk about any kind of abdominal organ. This is clearly intraperitoneal. So the entire liver is pushed into the peritoneum and the peritoneal relation is theoretically not really uh, uh, 
um, uh, complicated. Let's imagine we had a Santa Claus, a Claus bag into which stuff is pushed in, and we make a kind of ligation, but the upper surface a little bit uneven. And this is a principle how the liver is uh, positioned relative to the, they have the peritoneum is positioned relative to the liver. Uh, first of all, along the liver, we have a normal capsule that is named the glissons capsule, which is a uh, normal thin layer of dense collagenous connective tissue, like in most of the organs. This is the own component of the uh, liver. On the top of it, very strictly adhered to that, we have the uh, visceral peritoneum on the surface of the liver. Uh, if we find the, uh, the peritoneum in the right, uh, right lobe, it turns back to the uh, anterior abdominal wall, makes a, a little free piece of the peritoneum. Same thing happens with the left lobe, and this peritoneal doublet is named the falciform ligament. Falx, you know, it's a Latin for sickle. It's really a sickle-shaped peritoneal doublet. On the lower part of this doublet, we, it's embedded, uh, this turned uh, uh, itself back, and it's, there is a ligament, so-called uh, the, the ligamentum teres, or a round ligament. This is the remnant of the umbilical vein. The, uh, further, the continuation of the steel laminas in the left side and, and, and in, the, in the right side and the left side are the coronary ligaments. Uh, they have a little bit different uh, structure. Uh, the uh, right coronal ligament is actually a peritoneum when it turns up and turns back to the uh, diaphragm. This is the similar thing, the anterior wall, this is a cross section. It goes up and turns back to the diaphragm. You have to notice that behind that, there is no peritoneum for a certain area, and this is the bare area of the uh, uh, liver. It's the direct contact without any uh, the peritoneum of the liver. In the uh, left side, partially similar, the anterior side goes up and turns back to the diaphragm. This is uh, what I show, but it is not visible in this picture you see later on. On the back side of the uh, lobe also goes up and it makes a very, very visible uh, peritoneal doublet. So the difference between the right and the left coronal ligament is that the right is a single lamina, the left one is a peritoneal doublet. If you go uh, on, uh, on the left side, it becomes wider. This is sometimes named the triangular ligament. Uh, whenever we go back here, and here we, we can see the hepatorenal ligament, which is uh, uh, a continuation of the right uh, coronal ligament. This is the hepatorenal ligament right here. And you can see on the posterior side of the liver, it turns back before it reaches the diaphragm and becomes the posterior uh, 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 peritoneum. Uh, the, because it turns the, the kidney, this is why it's named the hepatorenal ligament. Now it continues. Uh, around the uh, uh, caudate lobe, and it goes down in the fissural ligamentary venosi. And this uh, uh, piece of peritoneum goes further more down to the uh, 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 stomach, and this is, uh, this is that. This uh, peritoneal doublet from the kidney to the lesser curvature of the uh, stomach is the hepatogastric ligament. Uh, the other part of the hepatogastric ligament is a continuation of the posterior lamina of the uh, left coronary ligament. So practically here, this is the way it turns back and goes down to the stomach and taking around the stomach. Uh, the continuation of these things is going around the structures of the porta hepatis and going back again. And this uh, peritoneal, peritoneum uh, covered structures are the so-called hepatoduodenal ligament. Uh, the, so the peritoneal relation is that we can do a continuous line from that. Here is missing because it's below the level is the uh, 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 round ligament of the liver. So this goes this way. This is the uh, right coronary ligament. This is the hepato. Uh, uh, renal ligament, then we go here this way back. This forms the right side of the hepatogastric ligament, 
turn around the structures forming the hepatoduodenal ligament, then it turns back forming the left side of the hepatoglastic ligament and the posterior and the anterior lamina of the coronary ligament and goes back. So we can see as with a single line uh, the peritoneum and through this opening, simply similar to the, uh, the Santa Claus bag, the liver is pushed in and this is why we have a, if you think this way, very simple peritoneal covering. Fixation is critical. Uh, the liver is our heaviest organ and it must be fixed very uh, thoroughly. Uh, the number one fixation is the peritoneum. All of these peritoneal laminas fix the liver to the, the diaphragm. Uh, the, beside, uh, we have an uh, area of the liver in which the uh, liver is directly connected, this area, to the uh, diaphragm, so the bare area. So most of this, up to this point, uh, described uh, fixation is fixed this, the liver to the uh, diaphragm. The bad news is that the diaphragm is very weak, so it actually cannot hold up. Uh, the liver, it just has a kind of anatomical significance. Another organ uh, which relatively fixes the liver is the inferior vena cava. You know it's embedded in the posterior wall of the liver. This makes more problem than use because uh, in some kind of accident, when for instance you forget to open up your parachute and it falls down to your leg, you will die in a couple of seconds, not because you broke your leg, but because the liver want to go down and breaks the inferior vena cava. And this you can survive with just a couple of more seconds than minutes. The real fixation is done, very interestingly, by the abdominal organs. The abdominal organs themselves are very soft, but if the abdominal muscle pushes together, they forming a kind of pillow-like structure, it very efficiently keeps up the liver. Uh, you can uh, make an experience on yourself if you uh, jump down for, let me say, a half a meter and put your uh, hand into your stomach. When you fall down, it's a reflectory contraction of the muscle. Whoever doesn't have this reflex, you know, it has a limited chance to survive because this is what protects the liver when we f uh, going down a kind of compressed abdominal organ. They can very well tolerate the compression. Uh, the uh, blood supply of the liver. Uh, the uh, liver is supplied by the uh, celiac trunk, the unpaired branch of the abdominal uh, artery, and uh, this is the common and the proper hepatic artery and goes into the liver. Uh, the uh, hepatic artery is good for the oxygen supply you will see later on of the liver, and this is a very rich thing as you can see in this x-ray picture. The other uh, structure which carries blood into the liver is the portal vein. And that's very strange. Usually the veins carrying the blood out of an organ, but in this case the portal vein gets, carries the blood into the uh, uh, organ, into the liver. Why? Because this is carrying the raw material, whatever the liver must work on. This carries the uh, unwanted materials, the end, the function of the uh, liver of which is to process them. Uh, this is done by a complicated system, complex system, named, we named the portal system. Here you can see the portal vein, which uh, gets most of the blood from the small intestine through the, uh, to the superior mesenteric vein. The second most, the biggest vein to that is from the spleen. Spleen has very good blood supply, and the splenic vein also goes to this one. And the third one is the rest of the guts, uh, the whatever the derivative of the hind guts, and embryologically collects the blood into another vein. Uh, this is the inferior mesenteric vein, and finally we have a vein of the uh, stomach, and this is the main major vein is the left gastric vein, which are uh, doing that. These four veins, the superior mesenteric, the inferior mesenteric, the splenic, and the uh, gas, uh, left gastric vein go into the portal vein and this goes to the liver to, uh, for the blood to work on. So the whole principle of this one is a kind of double capillarization from the artery. The blood goes to the organs, like the guts for instance, and it becomes capillary, capillarized. And this is why it absorbs a lot of stuff. 
Some of them is useless or harmful for us. Then it goes to the intermediate vein. This is the portal vein. Then it goes to the liver, makes a secondary uh, uh, capillarization. And this is how the processing happens. So elimination and processing the unwanted or useless materials. Then it goes to the general circulation to the hepatic vein, to the inferior vein and cava. So this double capillarization system was first invented in the uh, portal and similar uh, double capillarization present in many uh, part of our body and this is why the, all of these circulations named uh, after this as a portal type of circulation. Where the port, uh, which organs collect the blood into that, it's not necessary to list them. The, we have a very common interesting feature. All of them are located in the abdomen, and all of them we have one. Any organ which is in the abdomen, and normally if you have one of them, will go into the uh, portal system. So this is what we name the unpaired abdominal organ drain their blood, venous blood, into the portal system. So uh, especially important are the uh, veins, veins from coming from the blood, which has a lot of raw nutrition, which is the primary task of the liver. Also from the spleen, which is the cemetery of the uh, old eliminated erythrocytes, the hemoglobin, and most of the, uh, the uh, uh, membrane fragments go into that, which is both of them are harmful for the general circulation, go to the liver and to for and elimination. There is a medically, uh, medically important connection between the portal system and the general circulation, and this is what we name the portocaval anastomosis. Uh, what is that? Uh, the principle is that very frequently, the, unfortunately, there is a problem. There's a disease of the liver, which result in uh, damage, extended damage of the river cells. Like uh, uh, if you're drinking a lot or uh, different hepatitis, hepatitis viruses. And this, uh, after these cells are damaged, they will be scared for connective tissue scar formation, which compresses the vessels and this makes difficulties to pass through it. Consequently, it, the blood, especially coming from the small intestine, has difficulties to go back to the general circulation. This is why the, the pressure increases in the uh, portal vein and try to find the escape route, a side way to the uh, uh, cava system. Uh, we know five such a side route, three of them has medical importance. These three are the following. Number one is the cardia. Around the cardia, in a normal circulation, when the liver is healthy, the part of the blood, the venous blood, goes up in the wall of the uh, esophagus and through the esophagus system and the superior vena cava system. The other part goes down to the stomach and through the left gastric vein to the portal system, and this goes down very nicely. Whenever the pressure increases in the portal system, large quantities of blood coming from the uh, small intestine, the pressure reverses the circulation of the, in the left gastric vein and the blood, part of the blood which coming from the small intestine through the left gastric vein goes to the uh, esophageal vein system and finally to the superior vena cava. Uh, in the consequence of that, that these uh, veins are enlarged which can you show the with medical imaging, and also sometimes it can rupture and the, and the uh, the patient will vomit in form of blood into your face. The diagnosis that he or she has liver cirrhosis. The second one is around the umbilicus. And in the round ligament of the liver, we have the remnant of the umbilical vein. This has a little cave, uh, uh, lumen in it. And whenever, and usually relatively slowly, the circulation problem the liver develops, it becomes larger and larger, and the increased pressure in the portal vein will be drained by the umbilical vein. The umbilical vein is communicating with the venous system of the abdomen. In this case, the abdominal veins become enlarged, and this look like snakes in the abdomen. This is why I had this romantic name, the caput medusae, the head of medusa. As you know, in the Greek mythology, medusa was a lady. And from jealousy, its uh, hairs were uh, transformed into snakes. And this really looks like a 
hair, uh, the, the hair uh, snake transformed hair. The third one is a rectum, which has also medical significance. It means that normally the rectum, the upper part of the rectum is drained to the inferior mesenteric vein to the portal system, while the lower part of the rectum drains to the cava system through the internal iliac vein system. And especially for some borderline, the blood goes either up and down. The same story if the liver has cirrhosis, has problem, the large quantities of the blood coming from the small intestine re reverses the flow of the, the inferior mesenteric vein. Up to this point it flows down and not up, and many of the veins from the small intestine want to pass through the rectum to the inf inferior vena cava. This will enlarge the uh, veins which do not tolerate, it is not designed to this pressure, and this is what we make the so-called hemorrhoidal nodes. Uh, this uh, uh, be important, hemorrhoidal nodes not comes only after liver cirrhosis, it has a couple of other reasons, but this is one of the reasons why. Uh, the special venous drainage of the rectum also has another medical significance, the application of the suppository. Why, what is that? If you take a pill, uh, the, it absorbs uh, to, uh, through the guts and goes to the portal circulation, and the liver doesn't know that this is the medicine. It wants to eliminate it and make a lot of medicine useless. Uh, this is why many medicines should be applied only uh, just by injection. However, in the lower part of the rectum, if you apply the medicine here in form of suppositorium, will be absorbed to the lower, uh, the lower veins, directly goes to the inferior vena cava, and whenever you apply medicine through the rectum, it works as if it were an uh, uh, injection. Finally, after the uh, blood went through the liver, it goes to the hepatic vein. Hepatic vein is just intra, uh, organic, it doesn't come out of the liver. If you see into the inferior vena cava, these openings uh, are the hepatic veins, and finally they go to the inferior vena cava. Okay, let's go to the bile duct system. The central component of the bile system is the uh, gallbladder or vesica fella or in Greek cholecysta, all of them used uh, equally. Where is that? It's relatively easy to locate. If we go to the costal arch and crossing with the midclavicular line, this is the location where we find the gallbladder. Uh, this is the uh, x-ray picture with uh, 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 the uh, 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 contrast material. By the way, you can see a little bit gold stone here, and you can see the size and shape of the gallbladder. Now, how the bile circulation works. Uh, we have the, uh, the bile is produced by the liver cells, and many of the bile ducts are intracellular, so with histological distribution of the liver, I will talk about that. Uh, whenever the, uh, the bile goes out, usually two lobar uh, structure, and then we have the, the, the hepatic duct, uh, in which uh, comes out uh, of the uh, uh, liver. The second uh, duct is the cystic duct, uh, which can, uh, connects the hepatic duct to the cholecyst. The third one is the common bile duct, which uh, makes a kind of, with the two other ducts communicating. At the end of the common bile duct, we have an enlargement. Here we have a ring-like muscle, the musculus sphincter ordi, which has plays a very important role in the bile circulation. And finally, the whole uh, bile duct system, together with the pancreatic duct, opens into the uh, duodenum, uh, usually to the uh, greater duodenal papilla. Now, how the bile is circulating? Uh, the liver produces the bile continuously, day in, day out, continuously producing that. So through the hepatic duct, the uh, bile flows continuously. However, normally the sphincter rod is closed, so there is a traffic jam here, the bile cannot come here, so the only way the, the bile can go is through the cystic duct and fills up the cholecyst. The cholecyst stores the bile and partially concentrates it, it absorbs the water on it, and uh, uh, that's in most of the time. It releases periodically, and whenever we have fatty substance going into the duodenum, uh, these uh, uh, cells in the duodenum produces a, a hormone named cholecystokinin, and this has two functions. 
it contracts the, the uh, wall of the gallbladder, the smooth muscle in the wall of the gallbladder, it pushes out the uh, bile, and at the same time it releases the sphincter artery and let the bile uh, uh, flow freely. This is happens just periodically, a short period of time. Most of the time, just it's uh, collected by the gallbladder. Now that was about the important, uh, com uh, most important uh, pieces of information on the anatomy of the liver. Let's go to the next organ, the spleen. The spleen is located a little bit hidden area in the left side, just below the diaphragm. Uh, it is purely interperitoneal. One surface is clearly covered by the peritoneum without any intervention. In the other side, the visceral part, we have a peritoneal doublet between which the artery and the vein for the spleen passing. This peritoneal doublet is continuous. Uh, it continues, first of all, it connects the spleen to the greater curvature of the stomach. You can see a fragment of that. This is what we named the gastrorenal ligament, splenico-gastric ligament also named that. It partially goes up to the diaphragm. This is the phrenico ligament, phrenico ligament. And indirectly, there is another peritoneal derivative, which is important in the uh, life of the spleen, is the phrenico-colic ligament, this one. This is not directly in contact with the spleen, but it makes a kind of a nest for the spleen and keep it up like a shelf. This is what we named nidus lienis. Nidus is Latin for nest. This is where the spleen is sitting. Uh, surfaces, uh, it, has, it has two surfaces. The diaphragmatic surface is smooth and sitting in a diaphragm and that's easy. The visceral surface is a little bit more complicated. It makes in, or it contact with a couple of organs. Uh, the uh, skeletal topography of the uh, spleen is it between two ribs, between the ninth and the eleventh rib, the longitudinal axis is parallel to the tenth rib. Normally, it doesn't go beyond the last rib. If it does, this is a problem. This is what we name splenomegaly, like this one. It may have several uh, causes you will study later on in your medical studies. So with serotopography, the diaphragmatic surface is in contact with the diaphragm, as I mentioned. Visceral surface, if you want to uh, uh, get oriented on the visceral surface, this is a natural one, you have to imagine a Y-shaped groove system. And this is what that, and it separates the visceral surface in three areas. Uh, this one is on the back, if you imagine that the, uh, the spleen is there, and you can see in back side of the spleen we have the kidney. And this is what we name the renal impression, the impression for the kidney. Uh, the second one is in front of the hilum. Uh, this is the stomach is missing from here, so this is sitting in this area. This is the gastric impression. And finally, lower here, uh, this is in contact with the left colic flexure, and this is what we have, the colic inflection. Finally, the helum is also uh, in contact with the organ. Here is not visible in the picture, is the pancreas, and the tail of the pancreas is it's just a direct contact with the helum. The blood supply of the spleen is relatively simple. It comes the artery lienalis or splenic artery. It's also a branch of the uh, celiac trunk and it runs uh, just above the pancreas or practically embedded the upper margin of the pancreas. And usually in many branches it enters the spleen. The splenic vein runs similarly on the upper side of the pancreas and as we mentioned before, this is the, belongs to the portal system and carries the blood of the spleen into the portal system. And finally, what are the roles of the spleen? Why we have the spleen? Number one, it's a blood reserve. As you see in histology, it has many smooth muscles uh, of the spleen, uh, of the uh, content, and if you need extra blood, it will press it out and the, we get more blood. For instance, if you eat a lot, our gut, gut needs a lot of blood. When after eating, we have to run for something, like a bear is coming after us, we have to run after the bus, this uh, uh, smooth muscle in the spleen will contract and pushes, adds more blood to general circulation. This is the blood reserve function. Uh, the second one is role is the uh, uh, erythrocyte filtration, red blood cell filtration. What does it mean? 
Whenever the erythrocyte become old, the fragment, the membrane become a little bit uh, uh, fragile, and in the spleen there is a the circulation you will see in histology. The circulation is uh, relatively difficult for them, and they break, and this is how they die. And the hemoglobin will get into the bloodstream, and the liver will eliminate the membrane particle partially eaten up by the phagocytes in the spleen and partially by the Kupfer cells in the liver. Uh, this is also a, a primarily a lymphatic organ. Uh, all the lymphatic functions happening in the, uh, in, in the spleen also produces hormones. The hormone that is produced is the erythropoietin. As the name says, erythros is Greek for red. Poetin means producing, it's actually producing red blood cells producer hormone because the uh, spleen has a direct information how many erythrocytes dies because they die in the spleen. They will control very efficiently the production when a lot of erythrocyte dies, increases the hormone production and facilitates the uh, production. And practically, that's what I wanted to talk about uh, today. And thank you very much for your attention.